نحمد و نسلی و نسلم على رسوله الكریم اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم Honorable brothers, sisters, elders, my youngsters and my dear children Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu This is Ustad Ramadan Al-Madni joining you from the blessed city of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and you are listening to Revive FM on Facebook Live and YouTube Live and you're listening to the show titled as Al-Minhaj Al-Sawi Min Al-Hadith Al-Nabawi Inshallah today is uh, another very important topic especially closely and very closely linked to the blessed month of Ramadan We have this blessed month of Ramadan for a particular reason and that reason is because of the Quran The Quran was revealed in this blessed month The Quran was revealed in this blessed month and especially it was revealed on the night of Laylatul Qadr, the night of power. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi min shaytan al-rajim, inna anzalnahu fi Laylatul Qadr. Verily, we have revealed the Qur'an, we have revealed it on the night of Qadr, the night of power. So my dear brothers and sisters, the month of Ramadan is closely linked to the Qur'an. And what is the Qur'an? It is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the words of Allah Almighty. These are the direct words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which He has given us to guide us. Al-Qur'an al Karim is the book of guidance. The Qur'an is the book of guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, given through Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this Qur'an is a miracle it is a miracle and obviously the miracles of the Qur'an is a separate topic we will not go into that today but today inshallah I will be going through a chapter in regards to the recitation of the Holy Qur'an because this month is in which we tend to recite the Qur'an a lot so we're going to look at the narrations of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the red book al minhaj sawi Righteous Character and Social Interactions. So the title of this section is Faslun Fi Qara'at Al-Qur'an Wa Tahseen Sawti Biha Recitation of the Qur'an in a melodious and sweet voice. So reciting the Qur'an melodiously with a sweet voice. And we know that we have great Qur'an reciters all around the world. And we have great Qur'an reciters as young as a child. And to the extent we have great senior members in the Ummah who are great reciters. And many have passed away. Many have passed away. So what did the Prophet wasallam say in regards to reciting the Qur'an beautifully? The hadith is reported by Imam Bukhari in his Sahih, by Imam Muslim in his Sahih, by Imam Abu Dawood in his Sunan, by Imam Nisai in his Sunan, and by Imam Bayhaki in his Sunan al Qubra. <clears throat> these are the great Aimma, and you see that I always mention these names, it's so that you can become accustomed to these names. And when you go and research, you will find that these are the Aimma that the Ummah re- rely on. We've only heard of Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim, we've only heard of the Siha Sitta. But there are other great a'imma as well who have compiled these books uh, and narrations of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the ummah rely upon them. So the hadith is reported by Abu Huraira radiyallahu an. He says that Anna who sami' an Nabiya sallallahu alaihi wasallam yqul. Abu Huraira radiyallahu an heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam saying, "Ma azin Allahu li shayin, ma azin li nabiyin." Hassan is sawti yatagana bil Quran yajharubi. O kama kala alayhi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the hadith is recorded by Imam Khali, Imam Muslim, and many other aimma. So what did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? Allah has not rewarded any deed so much as he has rewarded the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for reciting the Quran melodiously and loudly. So the Prophet is saying that the, the reward that he has been given for his Ummah in terms of reciting 
the Holy Quran. And remember, in another hadith of the Prophet وسلم, it mentions that each letter there is ashara hasana. There are ten rewards for each letter. And in that hadith, the Prophet وسلم, clearly specifies alif is a separate word letter, lam is a separate letter, and meme is a separate letter. And for each one, there is ten rewards. And there's another indication in this that the reward for understanding the Quran, contemplating the Quran, and understanding the ahkam, that is separate. The reward for that is immense and is separate. But just to recite the Quran, there is a separate reward for it. And it doesn't mean that you have to understand the Quran to get the, re the reward for the recitation. Yes, as the Ummah of the Prophet وسلم, we should understand the Quran. We should understand the Quran. But my focus here is just to recite the Quran. Is there reward for it without understanding? Yes, there is. Because the hadith which I have just indicated, in which it mentions Alif, Lam, and Meem, no one knows the meaning or except for Allah Almighty and the Prophet. No one knows the meaning of Alif, Lam, Meem, and Haruf al Muqatta'at. No one knows the exact meanings for them. Which means that you don't have to understand to get the reward. Because Alif, Lam, Meem, when we don't understand that, but we still get the reward for Alif, Lam, and Meem, which are 30. Uh, hasanats, which are 30 sets of deeds and rewards for it. So, the Prophet وسلم, said that the, the amount of reward that is given to him and his ummah uh, it has not been given for anything else. What for? To recite the Quran melodiously and loudly. So, this is an encouragement to recite the Quran in a beautiful manner, melodiously and nicely. So moving on to the next hadith. The next hadith has also been recorded by Imam Bukhari in his Sahih and by Imam Muslim in his Sahih and by Abdul Razak in Al Musannaf. And the hadith is it's reported from Abu Huraira radiallahu an from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Qala the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Ma adhin Allah li shay'in ma adhin lil Nabiy an yataghanna bil Quran." The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said. Allah has not rewarded any action so much as He has rewarded the Prophet ﷺ for reciting the Quran tunefully in a sweet voice. So again, Hadith is emphasizing on reciting the Quran melodiously, reciting the Quran in a beautiful tone, in a beautiful manner, and that the reward is immense which the Prophet ﷺ has been gifted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> Moving on to the next hadith, and the next hadith is recorded again by Imam Bukhari in his Sahih. Imam Abu Dawood has also recorded this in his As Sunan, and Imam Ad Darimi has recorded it in his As Sunan, and Imam Bayhaqi has recorded it in his As Sunan As Sughra. And the hadith is re reported again by Abu Huraira radiallahu an. Abu Huraira radiallahu an said, "Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam." لَيْسَ مِنَّا مَنْ لَمْ يَتَغَنَّ بِالْقُرْآنِ وَزَادَ غَيْرَهُ لَا يَجْهَرُ بِهِ Allah's Messenger وسلم, said, He is not one of us who does not recite the Qur'an melodiously. This is the amount of importance it is given to recite the Qur'an in a beautiful manner, melodiously. That to the extent that the Prophet وسلم, said he is not from amongst us. The Prophet ﷺ does not want to know him. He ﷺ is emphasizing the importance of reciting the Quran. Reciting the Quran. Moving on to the next hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. And this hadith has been reported by Imam Muslim in his Sahih. And by Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal in his Al Musnad. And also by Imam. Tabrani, Imam Ibn Hibban in his Sahih, and Imam Bayhaqi in Shu'b al Iman. And the hadith is reported by Abu Umama radiallahu an. So Abu, Abu Umama radiallahu an says that I heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, You must read the Quran. Iqra al Quran. You must read the Quran for it will come on the day of judgment as an intercessor for its adherent. So for its ashab. Those who recite the Holy Quran, those who love the Holy Quran, 
The Prophet is saying and he's encouraging us to recite the Quran. He's commanding us to recite the Quran. Why? Because it will come as an intercessor, it will come as a helper on the day of judgment. And these are different ways which Rasulullah has opened up for his Ummah to be forgiven. This is the mercy of Allah Almighty and the love of Rasulullah for his Ummah that he has opened up this channel for forgiveness and for being intercede. That the Quran will come to intercede for those who recite it, for those who have become its companion. So oh my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this is just not for you but for also for me, a lesson and a message that we should love the Quran and as I said that the month of Ramadan is the best opportunity for you to get connected. Why? Because the Ram Ramadan is a season in which everyone is doing good deeds and when everyone is good, doing good deeds around you, the sohbah, the, the company around you encourages you to do it as well. So use it as an opportunity. Moving on to the next hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The hadith is recorded by Imam Tirmidhi and Imam Ibn Majah and Imam Bayhaqi. And the hadith has been reported by Hazrat Ali radiallahu an. He said, Qala Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Man qara al-Qur'an wa stazharahu fa ahalla halalahu wa harrama haramahu adkhalahu Allahu bihi al-jannah وشفعه في عشرة من أهل بيته كلهم وجبت له النار أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام. A very interesting hadith in regards to those who adhere to the Quran, who have become the companions of the Quran. Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said, if someone reads the Quran and learns it by heart and does hifz of the Holy Quran, learns it by heart and then declares lawful what it permits and declares unlawful what it forbids. I someone who reads the Quran, memorizes the Quran and then follow its laws. He keeps, he, he keeps halal as halal and haram as haram. He follows the laws. Allah will cause him to enter Jannah by it. Allah will cause him to enter Jannah by it, i.e. by reciting the Qur'an and practicing the Qur'an and he will accept his intercession on behalf of 10 people, 10 members of his family for whom the fire of hell has become wajib, for whom the it has been decreed that they will be entering fire of hell, 10 members of the person who recites the Qur'an, who adheres the Qur'an, who memorizes the Qur'an, 10 members of his family are able to be forgiven through this person because of his uh, love for the Quran, for his mem for his hifz of the Quran, for his adherence to the Holy Quran. Moving on to the next hadith. The hadith is recorded by Imam Tirmizi in his Sunan, by Imam Abu Dawood in his Sunan, and by Imam Ibn Majah, Imam, Imam Hakim, Imam Bayhaqi, Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal as well. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, Yuqalu li sahib al Quran, Ikra, Wartaki, Waratil, Kamakunta to Ratilu fit dunya, Fainna manzila taka inda akhri aya takra. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, said, The adherents of the Quran, those who are the sahib al Quran, those who love the Quran, those who recite the Quran, those who memorize the Quran, the adherent of the Quran will be told. On the day of judgment, you must recite and ascend the ladder of paradise. You must recite the Quran and climb the ladder of paradise step by step and recite distinctly, just as you used to recite distinctly in the lower world. So recite in the manner, in the, in the best manner that you used to recite in this world. Recite on the day of judgment and start to climb the ladder of Jannah. Why? For that will be your abode in paradise where you recite the last verse of the Quran. So the higher you go, the highest daraja, the highest level of Jannah you will have. So when the Sahib al Quran will be reciting the Quran and reciting it nicely and melodiously as he used to do on earth, he will climb step by step 
and when he finishes the last verse of the Quran where, where he will stop that will be his abode in Jannah this is the power of Quran this is the reward of the Quran given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala moving on to the next hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the hadith is recorded by Imam Ibn Majah by Imam Al-Nisai by Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal by Imam Hakim and by Imam Bayhaqi and the hadith is reported from Anas bin Malik radiyallahu an he said qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam inna lillahi ahlina min an-nas qalu man hum ya rasulullah qala ahlu al-quran hum ahlu allah wa khasatuhu allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam said that allah has his devotees he Allah Almighty has his special devotees amongst the people. The companions asked, Ya Rasulullah, who are they? And Rasulullah Sallallahu said, The kinsfolk of the Quran, those who are the adherents to the Quran, those who love the Quran, those who are the Sahibul Quran, they are Allah's devotees and his elite. So those people who love the Quran, who are passionate about the Quran, they are the special devotees of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the last hadith for today's session <coughs> before we conclude. And the hadith is recorded by Imam Tirmidhi in his Sunan, by Imam Darami, by Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, by Imam Hakim, and by Imam Bayhaqi, and by Imam Al Maqtasi. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. إن الذي ليس في جوفه شيء من القرآن كالبيت الخرب. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu said, He whose inner being I inside the heart, he whose inner being contains nothing from the Quran. When someone's heart is empty of the Holy Quran, then what is it like? It is like a ramshackle house. It is like a destroyed house. It is like a house that is destroyed, a house that has collapsed. It is like a house in a state of destruction. So all oh my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, in today's session, we went through many narrations of the Prophet ﷺ in regards to the importance of having the Quran inside you, having the love for the Quran, having the Quran inside your heart, being adherent to the Quran, being the one who recites the Quran loudly and melodiously. Allah on this because this is because the Quran is the kalam of Allah Almighty. The Quran is the are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And He Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to recite the Quran in a beautiful manner to follow the Quran and to keep the Quran in our hearts. I do dua may Allah Almighty make all of us the lovers of the Holy Quran, the lovers of the Kalam of Allah Almighty. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us the tawfiq and especially me to have the Quran in our hearts and that we practice it as well, that we adhere to the Holy Quran. Inshallah, I will be back next time with another topic. You are listening to Revive FM on 94.0, on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. See you next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Revive FM 94.0 On the radio On your mobile And online 